Okay, welcome to today's auditing class. So we're going to look at audit strategy now, and this is on page 912 to 917. Okay, so again, we, we're going step by step by step, right? Now, what is an audit strategy? Okay, well, first of all, the strategy refers to the mix of tests of control and substantive tests to be applied. Again, what does this depend on? Well, let's go back to chapter two, chapter three. Inherent risk and control risk. Okay. So again, if controls are believed to be effective and it is efficient to do so, controls uh, okay. If controls are believed to be effective and it is efficient to do so, uh, we want to use a combined audit approach. Okay. Meaning we're going to have tests of controls and some substantive tests. Now, if we find out that yeah, they have a high inherent risk, a high control risk, well, we can't use any control testing because they don't have any. Okay? If we were to try and rely on the controls, that entire audit that we produce might, might be um, materially misstated. We can't have that. So... What we will do is, in order to figure out are these controls effective, is we're going to test the controls to evaluate their effectiveness. Okay? Now, of course, we're going to have to learn what is the environment, what's their environment like. Okay? So, with this strategy, again, we want to understand the entity and its environment, and we're going to know that because we're going to interview management, we're going to interview key personnel. And then we're going to go right to the floor level. We're going to interview the clerks and just see how things are done. And we're going to listen. We're going to pick up on things. Okay? So when we look at understanding the entity and its environment, this is to assist the or in assessing the possibility of these misstatements. Okay? Because if we know that there are not a lot of controls in here, the likelihood of misstatement is increased. Okay? So... It's going to assist the auditor in developing an expectation in gross revenue. Okay. Again, is there a misstatement in that gross revenue? It'll, it'll help us understand uh, gross margins, uh, expectation of receivable levels. Again, and this is all related to sales and AR, obviously. Okay. Every other section that we're going to cover will, again, there'll be a different focus, but we're all trying to do the same thing. Is we're trying to reduce the risk that there's going to be a, a material misstatement. So revenue generation also drives many other costs. Well, we saw that from managerial accounting, right? We make a sale, but we also have that associated variable cost. Okay. So therefore, this can lead to an understanding of our expenditure cycles as well. So again, everything starts to tie in. Now, I remember one time, this one guy said to me, and I, you know, I was struggling. This was about 15 years ago, and I said to... Uh, I said to a buddy of mine that I was working with at the time, and I said, you know, I said, we're doing these audits, and I have no faith in these numbers. Like, the, 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 the final numbers aren't worth the paper, paper that it's printed on. And he's like, Jeff, you know, all you got to do is purify the balance sheet, and then the income statement will have to be right. Okay? What he meant by purifying the balance sheet was making sure the balance sheet's right and correct, not materially misstated. Because then everything is going to flow through to the income statement after that. So if the balance sheet right, ultimately the income statement has to be right. Now you might have classification uh, discrepancies, like something should have been recorded in uh, uh, unit A sales, but it was recorded in unit B sales, or something should have been recorded as a repair and maintenance expense, rather it was recorded as a utility expense. Not that big a deal at the end of the day, because... It, that bottom line isn't affected. The tax you have to pay isn't affected. It, again, it's just a classification error. But again, that's part of your your audit strategy, and you're going to realize that everything is tied into one another. You have a balance sheet account almost always tied into a income statement. So let's look at some strategy consideration. So again, I don't know what happened in the text, but they really uh, jumped quickly. But we want to, again, when we're when we're looking at or thinking out a strategy, okay, we want to really do a lot of analytical review. 
Again, that's comparing our current year numbers to our prior year numbers. Okay? And then that's going to give us, uh, let us focus in on, are there any areas that, uh, that we need to look into? Okay? If, the, if management says to us, you know, we had a really bad year. Okay. So if you had a really bad year, why did your sales go up? That would make sense. But again, you're not going to know that until you talk to management. Okay. And then if, you, and if something's contradicting the other, again, that's a, an area of risk, that's a red flag, you really got to look into it. Okay. Now, you can use other ratios and things like that, but again, a lot, a lot of times just talking to management and verifying what they say to your, your numbers are, are going to give you a lot of information. Okay. So let's now look at... Page 913, inherent risk. Okay, so inherent risk in relation to um, sales and receivables. So there's always going to be a pressure on management to overstate revenue. Okay, I have never seen an area where management did not want to try and get as high of revenue as possible. Now, in a pro small private company, there might be some other. Uh, other motivation, okay? They don't want high income or they don't want high revenue, why? Because ultimately that's gonna affect the bottom line, they're gonna have to pay tax. Okay? But with a publicly traded company, which is a require, an auditor is required, okay? There will be pressure on management to overstate that revenue, uh, to overstate cash and to overstate receivables. Again, you're gonna be able to tell, right? Because your revenue is gonna be tied into your AR. So if you're trying to pump through a bunch of extra expenses at year end, well, you're going to see that when you test AR, okay? And they're also going to try to understate bad debts. Why? Because that's going to affect bottom line too. So other inherent risk factors might include a high volume of transactions, okay? So a high volume of transactions mean there's already a risk before you even get to the control mechanism, okay? It's up to the control mechanism that you have in place to flag any inherent risk that you have might have from these transactions. I mean, if they're all manually entered, well, that's going to be high risk. Okay? But again, you will then look, hopefully you have control, uh, you know, a control procedure in place to mitigate any inherent risk that we have. Now, if you have continuous revenue recognition issues, that'll be an, uh, an inherent risk that we have to consider in our strategy. If cash, cash is susceptible to misappropriation, you know, as we move on, the, the, the greater amount of debit card transactions is going to really reduce the risk of misappropriation of cash. It's still going to happen, but that's a little bit less uh, risky. Physical cash. Now, if that cash goes in the bank account, you still got to be aware of what how it's going out, okay? And that might be an issue, but that would be covered when, you, when you're testing the bank, right? Uh, testing your cash accounts. Now also, I talked about this before yesterday, those sales adjustments can often be used to conceal theft. Why? Well, payment comes in, you write off the sales to a sales adjustment account, and you take that cash and you cash it. Okay? It does happen, not often, but it does happen. So we want to go, if we have these we're looking at the inherent risk that's related to sales and AR. So now we've got to be sure that we have internal controls. So remember, we want a, if, it, if we have a scenario of a high inherent risk, we likely have a high control risk, okay? So that's going to create a lot of work, okay? So we want a low detection risk. Remember, inherent risk times control risk times detection. So the control environment may enhance or negate the effectiveness of other internal controls. So a lazy control environment, you can have the best controls in the world, but if you have a lazy control environment, it's not going to do anything. It's going to hinder you more okay, than provide any good. So management adoption and adherence to high standards of integrity and ethics is a key control factor. Okay? If they go about things willy-nilly, again, you're going to have another problem. 
And all these problems that you're coming across, all it does is add time to the bottom line. So you really got to be aware of, from the audit standpoint of, you want it's a fine line between spending enough time to prove those numbers that the client gives you and going over budget. Okay? So lastly, when we look at internal controls, so a number of special policies are related to personnel are often adopted for those employees that handle cash receipts. So we might have job rotation, okay, mandatory holidays. Keep your eye open when you read the paper. And when you see someone gets caught for fraud or stealing cash, a lot of times it's because that person goes on holidays, someone replaces them for two weeks, and they say, hey, what happened here? Why is this person doing this crazy transaction? It doesn't make sense. They talk to management, uh-oh, now they have a risk. Now they found out that this person was stealing. There, I remember there was a case at St. Boniface Hospital probably about five years ago uh, with the ATM machine there. So yeah, the, the clerk went away and someone replaced them for two weeks and then the fraud was caught. So again, today was a quick class just looking at our inherent risks. We want to understand the entity, but we're, getting, we're going to get that in, in the very first stages of the audit. Again, talk to your client. Talk to management. Talk to the people on the ground floor. Okay? Now, again, we can use that information to tie into sales and AR. We want to do an ad local review. Okay? High sales. Okay, great. Well, then our AR should be relatively higher as well. Okay? But if, if things are, are, are not correlating, now you have an issue. That correlation is going to be determined through internal review. Or sorry, analytical review. Again, that's just comparing numbers. Then we'll go and do our inherent risk assessment, which we would have done already. Again, we want to be aware of those fictitious sales. Okay. We want to look at their internal controls related to sales and AR. Okay. Sales adjustments as well. But that is a key area where you can have uh, areas that are, are, are ripe for misappropriation or games being played. Okay. Now, lastly, again, oh, so I'm just looking here at the textbook internal controls. Uh, we talked about basically internal controls already, but if we wanted to, so now we're going to do our audit, okay? And we want to audit our credit sales transactions. So we have an audit program. You can see here from page 915. So what we want to do is the function of accepting customer orders. So sales may be made to unauthorized customers. Yeah, it could happen. What's a necessary control? Determination that the customer is on the approved customer list, approved sales order form for each sale. So what would be a possible test that we could do? Well, we could observe the procedure and reperform. To ask them, hey, can you show us this step? That would be a test of control. Okay. So if everything, if you, these controls are all falling into place, it, it's good. Okay. We uh, now examine approved sales order forms. If they have all the steps in place, again, another test of control that we've uh, accomplished. Now we can do the same thing for approving credit. Okay. And notice here it says relevant class of transactions, audit objectives. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to hit our assertions. And again, we're just going to go all down the list. And usually what will happen is uh, these will be pre-filled out. So you can just buy an audit program. You might have to customize certain things. But again, if, you, if you're hitting all these uh, the tests, these are tests of controls. Okay? Then that'll, have, that'll help you reduce the number of um, substantive tests that you have to review. But you create again pulling out invoices no one wants to do that it's a lot of work all right so that wraps up to today's class i'd like you to try and do paq 9.4 so again we're going we're getting through slowly getting through this chapter but now with with, with what we've covered today try and go back to 9 1 9 2 9 3 now paq 9 4 and compare your answer to what you've got in the textbook okay again 
It'll only help you for the exam. Again, the exam's going to be open book, just like the midterm. Um, so you use that information from the textbook, what we're talking about now, and uh, you shouldn't have any problem. All right, that's it for today. Uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow.